during the service, he's all like, oh, man. I was working for pasta all over. You know, the better half. I don't have a mic. Yeah, I made sure that he never had a mic. So can I ask you just to put me a smidgen down, because I feel like I'm shouting, and I can shout even without a mic. All right, so this morning we are going to do something extra special. We are going to tell you guys the story of Jesus and what this weekend is actually about. So this morning is for you guys. Okay, I'm going to be talking to you guys. I'm going to be overly dramatic for you guys. Okay, the rest of the older people, no worry about them. All right, so on this very weekend, Many years ago, many years ago, something very special happened. But, before I get there guys, I want everyone, back to Palm Sunday. It was Sunday morning, the sun was shining, it was a beautiful day, and Jesus, I was walking to Jerusalem and I was walking with my disciples and I told two of them to go fetch a donkey that had never been ridden on and it was tied up but I told them go fetch the donkey and untie it and bring it to me. And if anyone there says what are you doing with this donkey then just tell them the master needs it and they will let you bring it to me. So the disciples left and they went to go and look for a donkey. A there it is. There was a donkey. So they went and they untied the donkey and somebody said, Hey, why are you taking that donkey? The master needs this donkey. <laughs> and so they walked back to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, yeah, it's the colt. Thank you. I'm now going to get on this colt and I'm going to go into Jerusalem and we will see what happens. So Jesus entered Jerusalem. <gasps> And the people were so excited. It's Jesus! It's Jesus! Hosanna <laughs> to the king! And they waved torn brooches and they took their jackets off and they put it on the floor. And Jesus rode over the jackets and Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna to the king! Jesus entered Jerusalem as a king. Now I'm going to fight for. Jesus went away again and he prayed. 
Then he came back and he found his disciples sleeping again. But he went a third time and he prayed and he said, Father, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done. Then he came back to his disciples and he woke them up and he said, Wake up, wake up, the time has come and the Son of Man is going to be handed over into the hands of sinners. And then came in the distance. <gasps> Thank <laughs> you. 
<coughs> Bring forth Barabbas. Barabbas came and he stood there. Pilate said, now tell me, should I release this man who is a killer? Or should I release Jesus, who's done nothing wrong but helped you? Who shall I release for you today? I'll give you the choice. And what do you think the people said? They shouted, Barabbas, 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 Barabbas. All that Pilate could hear was, Bar Barabbas, we want Barabbas. <laughs> All right, Barabbas it is. <laughs> so he released, he washed his hands of Jesus' innocent blood. He took the water and he washed his hands of the innocent blood.
they took Jesus off the cross, carried him, and put him in a tomb. <laughs> pray that as we just go on through the story that you just once again just are reminded of, of, uh, of everything that Jesus has done for you and for me. I want to quickly just take you to a scripture verse and this one is found in Ephesians and, uh, and as I read it to you just pray and ask God that this happens. So Paul writes to the church in Ephesus from Ephesians 1, uh, from verse 15, it says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayer. So this is a prayer that Paul is praying over the uh, church in Ephesus. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. None of us know Jesus in the way that we can and that he wants to reveal himself to us. My prayer is that we get to know him better, that God opens up our eyes. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised 
raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in that one that is to come. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. So I want you to turn to someone and say, I see a resurrection. I want to encourage you, turn to someone, and maybe don't just say it to them, prophesy over them, I see a resurrection. You have the same power. If, if Jesus could rise from the dead, be raised from the dead, that's, that's, that's bigger than any miracle, really, that, that, that can happen. You know, so Jesus is raised from the dead. He conquers death. He conquers sin. He conquers everything. He conquers all the chains. He breaks the chains that have held you back. What you are going through there's a resurrection. There is power that will come. Maybe it's a resurrection of a dream that God gave you and you just haven't seen it come to fulfillment. Maybe it's the resurrection of hope. And it's like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to carry on? Maybe it's a resurrection power that, you know, just, just, just healing. Maybe it's a circumstance that, 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 that just seems dead, seems like nothing's going to happen. Maybe it's a relationship that you have with someone and, and it's dead. And what can happen with them? I want to tell you that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and me. That is where our hope is. Our hope is not in our own ability. Our hope is not in anything we can do. Our hope is in Jesus. And because it's in Jesus, that's why we can actually have a hope that will not disappoint. I see a resurrection. Believe in the power of Jesus. Believe in the name of Jesus. There is power. But I think one of the things that really need to be resurrected in the church nowadays yeah we need to see the church becoming on fire but it's this thing that the church would start to share the gospel I think for so long the Western church in general has 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 been so dead to God's plan and purpose for us to go make disciples Look at someone next to you and say, I see a resurrection. That God is going to resurrect a passion in you to share the gospel with your friends, with your family, with the people that you meet. Because this is not right for us to keep this good news just here. It's not right. But some of us have become so comfortable that we're not willing to share anymore what Jesus has done for us. I'm praying that there's a resurrection of that passion, of that fire that burns inside, that just to say, I can't contain it anymore. I can't. I have to tell people about Jesus. And let me tell you something. You are witnesses of that. It means that you've experienced that. That's why we see miracles. That's why we see God moving. That's why we see breakthrough. That's why we see us becoming free so that we can go and we can tell people about the power of Jesus in our lives. So how do we do it? I think it's quite simple. In, um, in Revelation, we read about the church that lost its first love. What does Jesus say to them? Do the things you did at first. Repent and do the things you did at first. I think so many times we, forgot, we forget to do those things. I want to encourage you in your relationship with God. Spend time with Him. Just go read the Bible. Just go and pray once again. Just do the things that, that once you did when you were so in love with Jesus. Do those again. In the circumstances that you're in, just start to believe once again and start to do the things that you did at first. There's resurrection power. I believe that in this place, even this morning, there is resurrection power. I'm going to call up Debbie and the dance team at this time and they're going to be doing a dance for us and I pray that as they do this that your eyes would be open to the power of Jesus and in Jesus name you would experience what God has for you this morning if you enjoyed this message click the subscribe button to be subscribed to our channel
we will remind you each week when the latest message becomes available. If you feel that someone else would benefit from this message, click the share button and share it with your family and friends.